But yes, yeah, so um, it really depends on the how we look at it. Some say we have many lifetimes. So who knows? If we have many lifetimes, then then I maybe didn't start this lifetime. But if we're just taking this lifetime, um, I asked my mother when I first came into contact with the language, and she said when she was pregnant with me, she would go to Sanskrit classes where she would learn how to write the Devanagari script. And as she wrote the Devanagari script, she would chant it with the other people in the class. So as a growing baby, heard the sounds and then in childhood heard many prayers from the Upanishads and one of the first classes we ever had at St. James School in London was from a great teacher called Mr. Warwick Jessup and he taught us the Maheshwarani Sutrani or the Shiva Sutras and every morning in assembly one of my founding memories of life was hearing him really enthusiastically sounding the and so it was imprinted in me from from age four or so. Wow, <laughs> it's a long time. Um, so you mentioned some of the hymns and some of the mantras. Mm. I did a short Sanskrit course five years ago, and I was particularly fascinated by how Sanskrit is much more than just a language, right? It has a beautiful connection with chanting, with even yoga, um, is that is that something that you could maybe tell us a little bit more about? When you say more than just a language, so I guess we could look at that statement, more than just a language, because what is the purpose of language in our day-to-day -day lives? The primary purpose of it is for us to communicate with each other, but as human beings we're constantly thinking in words. And what is the power of words? They are sounds, and what is the power of sound? Every single sound has a vibration. What's the power of a vibration of sound? It has the capacity, even scientifically, to change things on an atomic level. So what makes Sanskrita more than just a language for me is it, it has a system of sounds that hold the capacity to change things um, both on a psychological, emotional, and maybe perhaps you could say spiritual level, but um, also on a physical level, because many, many words in the Sanskrit language hold within their sound the ability for us to connect with the essence of that which they are describing. So, for instance, take the word ananda for bliss in Sanskrit means one who delights, one who finds bliss in, in everything. Ananda, nand is that blissful state, you know, nandati. And when you're blissful, what, what might be the physical result of it? You might dance, you see. So you see one word, nandati, which is rejoice, and it can, can express, express that. It might be through dance, for instance. But the very sound of the word holds that rhythm, that movement in it, nandati, nrityati, ananda. The words have this capacity to give you a certain feeling. Now I know what you meant by the magic up front. Mm.